order to fully understand Rumiko Takahashi and her contributions to the field of manga as a whole, you have to understand her place within that field. And that involves examining her influences, peers, and followers. This is what Orbiting Rumik World is dedicated to exploring. Daijiro Morohoshi is a creative force in Japan, and yet he is almost unknown in many English-speaking manga circles. Morohoshi is often said to be a mangaka's mangaka, due to how wide his circle of influence has become. Despite the plaudits of so many in the industry, his work has not made a significant impact abroad. As of 2022, he has no work officially published in English, and while horror artists such as Junji Ito are championed more and more in the West, and older horror maestros such as Kazuo Mezu are finally getting their due, Morohoshi remains in the shadows of the English-speaking manga world. Born in Karuizawa in 1949, Morohoshi grew up in the Adachi district of Tokyo, in the shadows of the ghost chimneys, towering thermal stacks belonging to the Sinju Thermal Power Station. Those nicknames come from their ominous silhouette on the horizon and their unique diamond arrangement which caused the thermal power station smokestacks to appear as two, three, or four massive towers, depending on the angle they were viewed from passing trains. It is in this surreal landscape that Morohoshi's childhood imagination began to grow. Morohoshi began his adult life as a civil servant before beginning his career in manga in 1970. It was in 1974 that he had his breakthrough upon winning the seventh Tezuka Prize for Sebutsutoshi, The Living City. The story is a science fiction horror tale about an infection that was brought back by astronauts from Jupiter's moon Io. Slowly, the plague absorbs machines and people, turning them into a single hive-minded organism. Unlike the grotesque horrors of Junji Ito and Kazuo Umez, Morohoshi's work is more akin to that of H.P. Lovecraft. It is an unknowable horror, bizarre and surrealistic. The influence of the European surrealists of the 1920s and 1930s is apparent in Morohoshi's manga as well. His melting city calls to mind the melting clocks of Salvador Dali, and the isolated steaming trains in a barren landscape suggest the cryptic works of Giorgio de Chirico. Morohoshi makes these influences plain, a 2020 museum show to celebrate the 50th year of his career featured reproductions of surrealist paintings by Dali and René Magritte, hanging next to Morohoshi's own works. If his art style is deceptively simple, it is also utterly unique. An oft-told story states that Osamu Tezuka, often prone to bragging about his own ability to mimic the styles of other manga artists, including the detailed drawings of Katsuhiro Otomo, once stated that Morohoshi was the only artist he could not imitate. Assistants have been said to be uncertain of how to complete their tasks when working with Morohoshi. He is an idiosyncratic voice in manga for the past five decades. Daijiro Morohoshi's first hit was 1978's Yokai Hunter, which follows former archaeology professor Reijiro Hieda during his discoveries of strange creatures. Hieda, like Tezuka's unlicensed surgeon Blackjack, has been shunned by the mainstream archaeological community due to his outlandish theories. However, his adventures into the unknown prove there are more mysteries in the world beyond the university's halls that Hieda has abandoned. It is from this series that some of his most important and well-known short stories have arisen. Seimei no Ki, The Tree of Life, is mentioned as drawing on Morohoshi's influence from Western art, where he shows a column of humans rising from a hellish pit into heaven in an illustration said to have been influenced by Tintoretto's mannerist painting, The Ascension of Christ. In the 1990s, Morohoshi dabbled in shoujo manga with Shiori Toshimizu, a tale about two girls and the supernatural events they come across in their otherwise normal town. This manga is more light-hearted than his macabre, better-known works. It would also eventually be adapted into a live-action series. Uniquely, it is in live-action that his work tends to be adapted. 
Very little of his manga has been made into anime, and a single obscure video game for the Famicom are the only examples of his work spreading into other media. One of the most unique series by Morohoshi are his Mud Men stories. The series delves into the life of Kadova, a half-Japanese, half-New Guinean tribesman who returns to his roots as part of the real-life Asaro Mud Men tribe. It is from Mud Men that Hayao Miyazaki drew inspiration for elements of his film Castle in the Sky, such as the magic word Barus, which originates in Morohoshi's manga. Design elements for Princess Mononoke also show Miyazaki's familiarity with Morohoshi's work. In fact, Hayao Miyazaki has cited Morohoshi as an influence on Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, which he once stated that he wished Morohoshi would have illustrated the manga instead of him doing it himself. Even the seminal Neon Genesis Evangelion cites Morohoshi as an influence. While no particular story elements were borrowed from Morohoshi, Toshio Okada cites Morohoshi's yokai hunter story, Shibito Kaeri, Return of the Dead, and the aforementioned Seibutsu Toshi, The Living City, as influences. Hideaki Anno cites Kage no Machi, The City of Shadows, as something he wanted to capture in Evangelion. That Rumiko Takahashi would mark herself as a major admirer of Morohoshi's work is likely no surprise to those familiar with her work, Urusei Yatsura. It is from Daijiro Morohoshi that she was inspired to name her lecherous hero Ataru Moroboshi. In Morohoshi's work Arumu no Rokotsu, or Adam's Rib, you see the strange monsters which invariably influence Takahashi's own Birds of Paradise in Inuyasha. Takahashi is such a fan of Morohoshi that she has written two short stories about her love of his manga and her joy in meeting one of her admired contemporaries. In her tributes to the author, she discusses her love of his story Ankoku Shinwa, The Dark Myth, before discussing half a dozen other series and short stories that she has loved, even concluding with a discussion of her joy in seeing Morohoshi on the manga-themed Man Bin television show hosted by Naoki Urasawa. A common thread that binds Morohoshi and Takahashi are their interest in mermaids. Both have delved into mermaid myth with a melancholy tone, and both have discussed with one another their fascination with the topic. Morohoshi writes about various maritime tales in his short story collection, Shikaban Gyorui Zufu, The Private Atlas of Fish, while Takahashi has explored the themes of unwanted immortality that comes with consuming the flesh of a mermaid in her mermaid saga. In their conversation, Morohoshi speaks with Takahashi about how she came up with the horrific nature of her mermaids. Takahashi explains that the initial storyline, A Mermaid Never Smiles, came from a desire to subvert expectations. Because mermaids are sea creatures, she desired to set the story in a mountainous landscape, with mermaids that were more monstrous than what traditional stories depict. Takahashi shares that she did a preview illustration prior to writing the initial story, and the challenge of then crafting a story that could live up to this teaser advertisement. Morohoshi responds that the American film director Roger Corman used similar techniques, often filming the trailer for a film in hopes to gain financing to make it. After 50 years of unknowable horror, perhaps it is finally time for the Western audiences to come to know this icon of the uncanny. Perhaps soon the manga artist among manga artists will finally have his place on the world stage. <laughs>